All right, today I'm excited to bring you a topic that I feel like is one of the most underutilized or underpracticed skills that is out there. I feel like when I'm working with players, they work on their ball striking, their short game, and their putting, but they don't really work on distance wedges very often. So I wanted to tackle distance wedges, and I think we have to start with what would be like a blueprint distance wedge shot that we would want to hit. And, and then from there, how would I do that in my setup and my swing that would likely lead to that blueprint shot? So let's go ahead and hit a couple just to start. And I want to talk about um, the type of shot I'm trying to hit when I'm generally hitting like a 70 or 80 yarder. So if I'm hitting a 70 or 80 yard shot, I think the misconception is, is that we want to hit the ball pretty high. And what I see happen when people try to hit it high, it kind of goes back to that video I made about topping and thinning your iron shots is when you're trying to hit it high, you're instinctively falling to the right for a right-handed player, and you're trying to add loft to your wrists. And if you are successful at making decent contact, well, what's gonna happen is you're gonna hit it really high and very, very short with very little spin. And so you end up doing a really big swing that doesn't produce a lot of energy that way. So when I'm trying to hit this 60, 70, 80 yard shot, this is about 80 yards in front of us, I'm trying to hit a really, really flat, low, three-quarter swing. And if you were hitting on TrackMan or on, on something that could uh, measure launch angle, we really wouldn't want the launch angle to be much more above 30 degrees on a, on a low wedge shot. So I'm going to go ahead and hit one just to kind of set the benchmark of kind of what's the shot we're trying to hit. And then, uh, then we can kind of go from there. Yeah, so that's a little bit left of target, but that was about the right yardage. So that will be our starting point. So we're trying to hit something about that high. So what am I doing at address would be my first point. So there's two things that are really important at address if you want to hit it low like that. Again, I'm using a 60 degree. This is my 60 degree uh, T-Grind SM10. I use this pretty much inside 90 yards for all my shots. Uh, so number one is ball position. So relative to the middle, I would like to have the ball slightly back for a couple reasons. One, that's going to steepen the angle of attack. And two, it's just gonna make it easier for me to probably physically feel like I'm gonna launch it low. If I have the ball forward or middle, it just, it seems counterproductive for me trying to hit the ball really, really low. So number one is ball back. And then number two, which is one that a lot of people don't think about, is I'm trying to get my nose in front of the ball at address. You can see right now, I'm leaning four or five inches in front of the golf ball with my, with my nose. So that is me taking my upper mass and leaning towards the target. So if I was hitting this shot typically, you can see I am leaning pretty far left. I have a little bit of shaft lean. My nose is in front, and then I'm gonna try to stay there as best I can. Yeah, that was really, really low. Yeah, if anything, that was almost a little thin. If I overdo that stuff, if I put the ball too far back and I set up too far left, I might thin the ball a little bit just because the angle of attack is, is so steep. So that's kind of the setup keys to this shot. There's not really anything else I would be focusing on. You know, some people choke up a little bit. That's gonna be personal preference. I don't move my hands down the grip at all when I hit these shots. I, I kind of do the same setup for most of my shots as far as that's concerned. Now, what do we do dynamically? Like, what am I doing to make sure the ball launches that low? Well, number one is, I always have to be focused on my energy moving towards the target. I've made a couple videos about this. Um, there's even one where I did a step drill. Um, I've done some things where I put some sticks behind the ball to make sure I hit the ground late. At the end of the day, anything athletic that we do, we're always moving towards the target. We don't wanna have a counter movement. So a counter movement would be, if I'm trying to do something that way and I'm moving this way, those are, in, those are against each other. I don't wanna be doing anything that's against moving that way. So as I'm setting up left on my backswing, I'm really focused on kind of staying there. And then as I go down, I'm really almost feeling like I'm shifting more towards the target, especially with my upper mass. You really, really want to avoid your lower body sliding this way because you can see that kind of puts me leaning to the right with my upper mass. I'm probably going to hit it high or fat. So number one is I'm trying to feel my energy moving towards the target. I visually can see I'm almost trying to hit up here. So let's do one. What, now pay attention to the face on here. You're going to see the bill of my hat or my nose moving towards the target here on the downswing. All right, here we go. 
80 yard low flighted wedge. Yeah, that was really nice. Popped up a little bit, but pretty good strike. Flew about the number. Okay, then the second thing that I'm focusing on is my length of swing. So if you, if you are trying to hit a flop shot, I'll start with this. If you're trying to hit a flop shot, what you're gonna see is you're gonna see this really big soft arm swing like this. And if I'm doing a really big arm swing like this, that is going to send the ball up. So if you wanna hit the ball really high, do a big arm swing. If you're trying to flight the ball down, you really don't see good wedge players do big swings. Like I'm thinking of Tommy Fleetwood, um, I'm thinking of Jordan Spieth, Justin Thomas, guys that hit their wedges really, really low. You just see them finish almost always kind of like this. So second key is I want you to do a smaller swing, which really isn't going to be that much slower. Like I think we think it's going to be a lot slower. It's not going to be that much slower because you're still generating a lot of speed. And then the last thing is I really want you focusing on trying to lead with your lead hand towards the target this way. The last thing we want is for this to slow down and this to catch up. If this slows down and this catches up, you can see that is adding loft. And if we add loft, that thing's gonna go straight up in the air. So I'm gonna be focusing on ball back, leaning left, three quarter swing on both sides with my energy moving towards the target and focusing on my handle moving towards the target. If I do all those things, I'm gonna hit it very, very low the ball's going to go very, very far, and I'm not going to hit any of these shots fat. I think that's the main problem is like low point control, hitting them way too high or fat. Okay, let's just do a few. Oh, that is really good. That may hit the flag. Yeah, you can see that landing. That probably landed five feet short right. Let's clean that up. You'll notice I'm hitting in a nice line of divots. If you want to be cool, hitting lines of divots. If you don't, that's fine. You just won't be looked at as a good player in my book. Got to hit in lines. Clean the grooves. Real quick on grooves. If your grooves are dirty, there's a bunch of dirt in there. Okay, so as I do this with this brush, that's cleaning them out. If you want to have low shots or any spin, you have to have these cleaner. There's not going to be any friction between the ball and the club face. The ball will come out much, much higher than anticipated. The same thing would happen with moisture. So cr clean grooves. All right, so ball back, lean towards the target, shoulder to shoulder, energy moving, and I'm gonna stick the finish. I'm really gonna overdo this one. See, I'm leaning towards the target. That was pretty much the same shot. That was very good. Okay, let's do one more. One more just for fun. And I'm going to put this all in a nice package so that you can take this on the course. Now, if I had an 80-yard shot, my expectation would be, one, that I would hit the green. But two is that at a minimum, I could hit it within 15 feet, a 15-foot shot. If I didn't hit it inside 15 feet, something, something really, really wrong happened. Like, I probably didn't hit it very well, or I really misjudged how hard to hit it. But luckily for me, 80 yards is a pretty stock three-quarter swing. All right, so here we go. So I'm setting up. So ball is back slightly, pressure is left. All right, I feel good. I'm gonna really try to hit this one low. And I'm trying to hit kind of a low draw. Hold my finish and you're gonna see that land right by the flag. So in summary, if you can do these setup keys and then you can do these swing keys, I imagine you'll start hitting these shots much, much flatter. And in, and in turn, they're gonna come out much further with a lot more spin and I guarantee you're going to hit more greens which is ultimately going to lower that score. So comment below if this was helpful, subscribe if you haven't, and uh, good luck in your upcoming rounds.